Hi, my name is Fate, and I'll be doing a tutorial on how to mod music files for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we'll be modding the Steam slash PC version of this game. So to get started, um, to find your base folder install location, you'll want to right click in your Steam library on the game for Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. Do a right click and you'll see a manage and go to browse local files. Uh, once you see Windows pop up showing the folder that uh, where the game is installed, you'll want to jump to the native DX11 folder. Next, go to sound, DGM, MVC2, then wave. And this wave folder will contain a bunch of SNGW files, which are really just OGG files, uh, uh, just renamed with a diff different file type. So for the purposes of this video, we'll be altering the, I would say, oh, I want to do the character select screen. I haven't made changes to that yet. So if you really want to hear what these files sound like, if you guys have VLC media player installed, you can just drag these files into VLC. I want to take you for a ride. Character select So. That already tells me that this is the file that I want to edit. So the next thing is to actually create our new music file, which will replace this existing uh, music file within this folder. And for that, we're going to be using Audacity, which supports uh, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux installs. Uh, so the file that I want to mod into this is spoil for you guys it's gonna be the third strike character screen instead so, when you want to create this file within audacity uh, your goal is to regenerate a ogg file with three required meta tags um to show you what i'm talking about Say if we're going to create a file, um, you'll see on these metadata tags when before you create it, there's going to be, you know, uh, entries in which it'll tell you what the file, the music file is all about. Uh, in order for this to work, you're going to need three required metadata tags. Uh, one is the loop start, the loop end, and then version. Time will be an optional thing if you're, you know, altering, if you see Time, it's an optional tag uh, for existing OGG files, which I was playing around with earlier. Just denotes when the file was created. This was optional. What you really need are these three here. Loop start, loop end are um, entries in which denote your sections for your loop. The start of the loop and the end of the loop, respectively. Where version, the version tag is a required uh, constant of 0002. Um, but to find um, your loop start and loop end, you're going to have to play around where you're going to have to find a section of a loop where it's going to sound seamless when you define it. Um, word of advice to find those uh, endpoints, what you could do is try to zoom in and try to figure out when the loop occurs where the sound is going to match in the wavelength. Uh, easier way to do that if you're not in tune with trying to find, you know, something that will match up uh, wavelength to wavelength is just trying to find a instance, a very like small instance of um, silence, which is denoted by the wavelengths here, meeting this uh, line here, which denotes absolute silence in both uh, in both channels. This is your left and right channel, uh, re uh, respectively. So. I've done the research on where I want to find my two endpoints. Uh, how I manage to find it is I start finding my end uh, loop point and then figure out in the beginning, where can I loop it back to the beginning, which is my loop start. So I found that in advance there where my loop end is at, um, oh, I forgot to mention, um, your loop start and loop end are denoted in what they call samples instead of your traditional unit of time of seconds, minute or minutes, they, they note the value in something they call samples. So if you're using audacity, what you want to do is change your audio position boxes here to, from either, uh, your traditional, you know, um, unit of time to 
read, make it read and sample. So you'll find your values for your loop start and loop end easily. You kind of want to do the same with your selection boxes here as well. So that testing will be easier when you want to test out your, um, your loop start and loop ends to see if the looping will sound correct. So I've already found my loop start and loop end for the purposes of this tutorial earlier before this video, which is for my loop start, it's at sample 15,684. And then my loop end will be uh, 3.7 million, uh, 3.7020072. To test this out, and I'm gonna show you guys in advance, or I'm gonna wipe out my earlier test. To test out what your uh, your loop's gonna sound like, what you could do is create a, um, a selection in Audacity by inputting these loop starts and loop ends. So at my loop start, I'll put in 15, let's eight, four here, and then my loop end here, which will be 3702072. So this will create a, a selection for you, for you to test your loop on. Now to make testing easier, uh, if you don't know Audacity off the top of your head, if you play around with it and you click, you will lose your loop. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to put this one more time. Uh, six, eight, four. So I've created my selection here. What you want to do this time is when you have your selection created, do a right click on your quick play bar here, right here, and you'll see a drop down. Lock the play region. Now you want to make sure that your play region is locked with your uh, start loop and uh, loop end uh, regions intact when you do your testing. Uh, so you make sure that you could do your looping uh, test correctly. So. I'm going to try to do that right now. So to do a loop play, you want to hold shift and then click here on the button or push space. And then to jump around again, so you don't lose functionality, you want to hold shift while you're jumping around, uh, when you're clicking around here in this, in this bar here. So as you saw from the playback, it looped back to the beginning it, and it did sound seamless. So I think I'm almost ready to export. What I want to do is I'm not going to be using, we don't really need this remainder. We, all we really need is the start prior to the loop and the loop itself. But to play it safe, I like to have like a little end bit at the end. Um, that tells me that the looping didn't work correctly. So what I could do is I could snip out the remainder of this, and then this little bit at the end after the loop, um, I could create a fade out of sorts. Now, theoretically, if I do my looping right, um, I should never hit this end section here with the fade out. But again, to play it safe, I like to have this just to have an audio cue that my looping didn't work correctly. So. We're about ready to export. So we're going to export as an OGG. And within our file, we want to create a SNG, SNGW file that is really an OGG file. You don't want to create a, a SNG file where deep down it's an OGG file. And I'll show you that check later. So for now, I'm going to create our actual file, which is our cellc.sngw file. I'll save. So. If you're doing this correctly, you should see a warning telling uh, Audacity telling you that you're creating an SNGW file uh, with the OGG export type, which is what we want. We want to do yes to this. Um, if it says you're going to replace something, you're replacing the original. What I like to do before I do my exports, if I'm going to overwrite anything, is to have a copy of the original. Um, so I did that here earlier. I do have an original of the, uh, I have a copy of the original right here with the Z underscore uh, notation here. So I'm good to overwrite the existing celsi.sngw file. And I'll show you guys what this looks like if we are creating it from scratch. Um, you'll want to add your metadata tags here. Um, the required metadata tags here. Loop start, which is your start and samples, 15684 for this file. Uh, loop and 
would be three seven zero oh, two zero oh, seven two, and then version or ver in this case this would be a hard coded value of oh, the zero 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 two. So we're good to create this file now. And to make sure we created the file correctly, you want to check in your file explorer that the file you created um, is a true SNGW file and not something, uh, not an OGG file deep down. What a common mistake people might be running into when creating these files is you may not have um, file extensions, known file extensions uh, uh, shown uh, for files. You might have something where this is, you know, showing um, it's not hiding a well-known, uh, well-known file extension. So when you create a file, you may run into something like theoretically creating an SNGW file. What this is actually going to create is a .ogg file with an SNGW file uh, extension prior to your true actual file extension. So say we create all this again. You may run into a scenario where you think you're creating an SNG where you're really creating an OGG deep down. And in this case, you're gonna want to have file name extensions enabled so you see the true type windows showing you that this is actually an OGG file. And you're gonna wanna snip out the OGG file to turn this into an SNGW file. So I'll delete that. And I think we're good to test this file out. So we're ready to go back into the game here. We're gonna jump into Marvel's Capcom 2. Let's open the game. Versus Capcom 2. New Age of Heroes. Let's see if our character selects screen changes. Select your heroes. And it's indeed changed. <laughs> now we got third, third strike character select screen music in Marvel's vs. Capcom 2. I'm gonna let it play it a little bit because I want to test out the actual loop to see if it loops correctly. It's gonna be about an, an additional minute here, so bear with me here. So we're about halfway there. So technically, as we've shown here, you could have a character select theme that exceeds the original. Like, you just have to define your loop. I don't think you want this one. Just practice this challenge me when you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up here. And it sounds good. So I think our test is pretty good and we could conclude the video here. So guys, this will be it for the uh, tutorial. Hope this uh, helps you all out with your music modding uh, endeavors. Gotta get rough. I'll show a little of additional change that I did via 2D training as well. <laughs> as a little bonus. A little ace comment music to end up the video. So again, to end the video, this is JP. Hope like, this video helped you out. And I'll see you guys on the next time. See ya.